Hi everyone, it's Andy here. Today a quick unboxing of the Voron V0 kit from Formbot 3D Printer Store on AliExpress. I will have links in the description below to the store and to the Voron website. The Formbot store is not associated in any way with the Voron design group. They are merely putting together the build of materials in one convenient kit to buy rather than sourcing it all yourself. Now when unboxing anything, it is of course important to use your sharpest yet flimsiest knife possible to put yourself at maximum risk of injury. Here's the treasure trove of goodies. I'm just going to dive right in and pull things out and show some various bits to the camera. Here we have some three core, supposedly silicon wire. There's a good few meters of it, probably a lot more than we'll need. There's a 100 watt mains voltage silicon heat pad for the heated bed. Uh, that should get nice and toasty real quick. We have a UK power cable, which is good, and it's got a 13 amp fuse in it. There's a Meanwell power supply, which is rated for 100 watts at 24 volts. Uh, this is more than adequate to drive all of the electronics in this kit. Uh, there's no cover on the screw terminals though, I will have to print one. This is an inline switch for the mains cord. Uh, the IB idea being that you wire this to the power supply and plug the kettle lead into it. Don't use this, it is a fire risk, as the switch is only rated for 6 amps and the plug itself has a 13 amp fuse in it. Uh, here's a bag of push fit connectors for the Bowden tubing. And here is a good length of PTFE tube. Looks to be about two millimeters in a diameter. Uh, allows filament to travel fairly smoothly through it. Here is some 3M VHB double-sided tape and some foam strips for insulation and noise dampening. Here is a cable drag chain for the bed wiring. Looks to be pretty good quality. This is a braided nylon cable sleeve. Here are some clear plexiglass sheets for the sides. Here's more plexi for the back. It's uh, black this time to hide the rat's nest of cabling and even more plexi. Plexi for days. This is a nice NTC 100k thermistor. Uh, it's in the capsule style, just like E3D Supply. Uh, I really like that they have the pre-crimped ends with the JST connectors for you on this. Here is a 30 watt, 24 volt heater cartridge. Uh, unfortunately, it's not marked or labeled. Uh, I had to test the resistance to find out. Here is some toothed idlers. This is uh, some sort of 16 pin socket pair. I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to use this for.
is the tooth belt loop. Uh, appears to be a genuine Gates branded one too. This is uh, for the Z motor lead screw assembly. Oh god, more plexi. Just put it aside. Just put it aside. We don't need to see it. Here's the bag of bolts. This has all the fixings for the kit. Here's the magnets for the door. How do they work? Only wizards know. Here's some 20 tooth pulley for the Z axis. Here's the stepper motor cable for the extruder. Here's pulleys for the core XY mechanics. Here are some M3 heat set inserts. And here we have two magnetic spring steeled textured PEI print beds. Uh, they sent me an extra one because they couldn't supply LDO branded stepper motors without having a long lead time. One side of it is uh, smooth and slightly gold looking, uh, but don't be fooled, it's not PEI coated. Uh, the side you want is the bumpy one. Is a nice thick block of aluminium to act as the bed plate. Uh, I did take a look at it later with the plastic off and I could see that it's not a machine plate but I slapped a ruler on it and I'd say it's flat enough for the purpose. Oh god, more plexi. These uh, odd trapezoidal sections are to make up the uh, hat that goes on top of the printer to keep the heat in when printing high temperature plastics like ABS and ASA. Ooh, that's a special request I made, better save that till later. 125 degrees Celsius thermal fuse. Spade and fork crimp connectors. Uh, which are good for the screw terminals and the power supply. However, these ones are a bit on the cheap side, so I ended up using some ferrules instead. Here's uh, some GT2 Gates branded belt. Uh, there's just enough here for the assembly, so don't mess it up. Here is the Z lead screw with a poly anti-backlash nut. Uh, the anti-backlash makes it a little stiff to turn. I'll be experimenting with it on and off later. This is the thrust bearing that goes on the bottom of the Z lead screw and belt assembly. Again, make sure to use your sharpest knife and hold it in a way that will ensure you'll need surgery later. This is the adjustable DC buck converter uh, used to take 24 volts from the PSU down to 5 volts for the Raspberry Pi. Always make sure to test the output voltage and adjust it before you wire anything to up to it. Here are some bed springs. This 
is high trigger solid state relay glad they included the high trigger version some people complained they got low trigger ones which means that the power would flow by default and that's a fire hazard i don't really need i'll have to print a case for this one uh, just because it deals with mains voltage another bearing for the z assembly some micro switches can't tell what brand they are, but honestly, it doesn't matter much. A Sunon 30mm fan for cooling the hot end. Uh, a pair of 30mm blower fans for part cooling. We'll have to see how effective these are. Some rubber feet. Lipped idler bearings for the Core XY mechanics. A box of nylon M3 standoffs, spacers, and nuts for securing the electronics to the printer in a non conductive fashion. Box of JST connectors and sockets. Quite handy as the Big Tree Tech board uses these type of connectors. All the gubbins for the pocket watch extrude design as part of the V0 spec. Uh, looks very similar to the self-printed version of the Bontech BMG clones. Ah, now to the special request I made to Formbot when I purchased the printer. I asked if they could include a Dragon high flow hot end in the kit instead of the E3D V6 clone. Some teeny tiny NEMA 14 steppers. They look so dinky compared to the NEMA 17s. And just when you thought it couldn't get smaller, the extruder NEMA 14 motor is practically a choking hazard. I have no idea who Anfod are. The MGN 7H rails are well packaged. The controller board, which is an SKR Mini E3 V2. You can tell it's a genuine Big Tree Tech board because no one else is crazy enough to include a branded squeaky duck with every single product. The board comes with several jumpers and an SD card, which is nice as I'm starting to run low on them. The frame is made up entirely of 15 by 15 mil aluminum extrusion. Each piece has been pre-drilled and tapped on both ends as per the V0 specification. A nice touch is they anodize the profiles after cutting and drilling so there's no exposed silver. Finally, here is the Pi 3B Plus. Uh, this will form the brains of the unit and provide your web interface of choice that runs Clipper. There's no SD card included with this one, unfortunately, so I will have to sacrifice one of the other Pi project that I've got sitting in my drawer for this build.
Phone packing works quite well to keep the content safe on its trip from China, but I really wish they'd start using more recyclable materials instead. So that's all that's included in my kit. Let's get a nice spread shot going. And hey presto. Let's get a closer look at that dragon hot end. Flimsy stabbling implement at the ready. God, I can't even cut through plastic wrap properly. What is wrong with me? There we go. Shiny black and copper with that day glow orange silicon sock. Nice. Comes with a 0.4mm nozzle. Quality and the finish look really good. Also includes some spare bolts, allen keys, wrench and a clip for the push fit connector. Here's the bits in the pocket watch extruder kit. Uh, you'll have to print the casings and parts for it yourself. This is all the mechanical bits you'll need. That's it, put Stabby McStab away before you hurt yourself. Just another look at the power supply, see if it had a 110, 220 volt switch on it, but it is actually just a 220 volt input only model. That's all for now. Please like and subscribe to catch the next part where I'll be building the V0 and walking through some of the good, bad and ugly of this kit. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.